Hello, Algebra 2 students. Today we're going to be going over the Unit 6 activity. Um, and um, so if you haven't, um, go ahead and pause the video and open that up right now. And we're going to get, get going on it right now. Um, let's see. Let me share my screen here. Okay, so here's the beginning of the Unit 6 activity. Uh, exponential and logarithmic functions, which we're going to see that these two types of functions uh, are very closely related. In fact, they're inverses of one another. And we're going to see that throughout this activity. Okay, <clears throat> you can read this if you want, but basically exponential and logarithmic functions are, are very common in the real world, uh, whether it's talking about populations, um, or uh, decays of um, like half-life decay of radioactive particles, things like that. Um, so basically it's kind of showing here that logarithmic functions are kind of the, basically the way you cancel out um, exponential functions. So whatever the base of the exponential function, in this case two, that's gonna be the log base when you rewrite it over here. They're inverses of each other. Let's get into the activity itself. Let me go ahead and put all these as unanswered here. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> oak wilt is a fungal disease that infects oak trees. Scientists have discovered that a single tree in a small forest is infected with oak wilt. They determined that they can use this exponential model to predict the number of trees in the forest that will be infected after t years. So here's the function here, f of t equals e to the power of 0 0.4 times t, where t is the amount of time that passes, and f of t is the number of trees that are infected. So here's your basic function here, f of t equals e to the power of 0 0.4 times t. So this is an exponential function, exponential function. Now, first thing it says is it wants us to graph it. Okay, graph it. So what I do is just, when you go to relationship, I always just go to the custom, okay? Even though you can use exponential, I always just go to the custom, um, and I, I feel like that always works out better for me. So let's go to custom here, and you're on the math editor. So um, let's see. T equals, and then I want this. So we're, we want to find the E. So we could just use the letter E from the keyboard. And we want to do to the power of, so that's going to be this superscript right here, 0.4. There you go, just like that. Okay. Now it doesn't really show it perfectly uh, on the right here, but this is the correct graph. So we could see after uh, after two years, we expect there to be about two trees infected after three years and so on. But if you scroll out, zoom out, you can perhaps get a better view of what's going on. So after five years, you know, it's close to, it looks like um, seven and a half, it shows, so seven or eight trees, and it grows exponentially. So when people say uh, exponential growth, that's what they're talking about. It starts off kind of slow, uh, relatively speaking, and then, but it shoots up rapidly. And lots of things grow with that sort of pattern, like technology or populations. Okay, in this case, it's the, um, it's the spread of this uh, oak wilt, which is a disease for the oak trees. And uh, as we saw with like uh, coronavirus recently, um, exponential growths for diseases can be spread like that as well. Okay. <clears throat> Part B. The scientists believe the forest will be seriously damaged when 21 or more of the forest's 200 oak trees are infected by oak wilt. According to their model, how many years will it take for 21 of the trees to become infected? 
Type the correct answer in the box. Use numerals instead of words. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay. It will take approximately blank years for 21 trees to become infected. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to use that same function we had before. f of t equals e to the power of 0 0.4 times t. And we want to know what is t, what is the amount of time it takes for 21 trees. So f of t is going to be 21, and we need to figure out the amount of time. We need to figure out t. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that function. Uh, f of t equals e to the power of 0 0.4 t, okay? And f of t in this case is going to be 21. So it's 21 equals e to the power of 0 0.4 times t, okay? So the key thing here is you want to get t by itself. So the way we will cancel out this exponential is by using the logarithm. As we talked about in the intro, logarithms are, are the inverse of exponential. So for e, what you do is ln, which is the log of a natural number, or natural log as it's called. So you ln both sides. Okay. Basically, ln is log base e. So since the base of this exponential is e, then we use log base e. But log base E is so common, it gets its own special notation, which is ln. So whenever you see ln, that's just the same as log base E. Okay, so the log base E with the E exponential, those cancel. So what's left on the right side, the ln and E cancel, so that's just 0 0.4 T. Okay, on the left side, we have ln of 0.21 ln of point, or ln of 221, ln of 21. So on our calculator, I want to do ln of 21. And your calculator, you should have a calculator that has ln on it, and you get three point, and I'll go like four decimal places here, so 3.0445. I know the question asked for one decimal place. It asked for to the nearest tenth, but we'll write our answer to the nearest tenth, but I like to do my steps with a few more decimal places, so it reduces rounding error in the end. Okay, now to get t by itself, we're going to divide by 0 0.4. So we have divide by 0 0.4. And um, whatever I'm writing, you should write as well. Whatever I write, you should write. It'll help you understand the material much better. Okay, so I'm dividing both sides by 0 0.4 to get t by itself. Okay, so that gives us 7.6. One and round to the nearest first decimal place, so round to the nearest tenth, that's just 7.6. Okay, because the one won't round that up. Okay, so 7.6. Okay. So it'll take approximately 7.6 years for 21 of the trees to become infected. Let's go ahead and look at our graph here. Um, you don't have to do this, but if you zoom out, you can see at 21 trees, that's like here-ish, how long would that take? It looks about between 5 and 10 years, right? Right in the middle there. So like 7.5 looks about 21. And as you can see, that makes sense, right? 7.6, 21 trees. And if you look at 7.6 on the x-axis, that's like here. And you can see 21. It's just above 20, right? Okay, hope that makes sense. But the graph definitely supports that this answer is correct. Okay, rewrite the exponential model as a logarithmic model that calculates the number of years, g of x, for the number of infected trees to reach the value of x. Enter the correct answer in the box. Okay, so basically it's what we did over here. Um, so what they're going to want is basically the inverse of this original function. And we're gonna write it as g of x, g of x. But basically, to write an inverse, 
um, I'm just going to write this as uh, x equals e to the power of 0 0.4 to the power of t. And my goal is to get t by itself. So, my, so it's basically what we did here. And just like when we did the first step, the first step would be to ln both sides to cancel out the uh, e. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to do the ln, which is log base e, to both sides of the equation. Now, why would I do that? Well, it cancels out the exponential, just like it did over here. Okay, so 0.4 e to the power of 0.4 t. And again, my goal is to get t by itself because I'm looking for the inverse, okay? The ln and e cancel, which is good. That's why we did that. So we have ln of x equals, and on the right side, we just have 0.4t. Now, what would we do to get t by itself? Same thing we did over here. To get t by itself, we divided by 0 0.4. Same thing. Divide by 0 0.4. And this inverse function, we're going to call it, um, they want it called g of x. So we're going to call it g of x equals, and then ln of x over 0 0.4, or just 0.4 is fine. OK. So make sure you write that in here. and. So we're going to do g of x equals, and to get the fraction, there's this fraction bar here. On the top, we have ln x. On the bottom, we have 0 0.4, or just 0.4 is fine. They want it as g of x. That's it. Cool. Now we want to graph that function. So we want to graph the logarithmic function that models the number of years g of x for the number of infected trees to reach the value of x. Okay, so again, we're just going to graph this, and we're going to use this relationship. Just I use just use the custom here. G of x equals, and it's that same function we just wrote. So, um, ln. Oh, there's an ln right here. You could use that ln of x over zero point four or just 0.4, the same thing. Plot that, and there you go. Okay, so this, this is the inverse of the function that we found up here. Okay, this, this function and this function, g of x and f of x, they're inverses of each other. Okay, and, um, okay, that's it. Okay, compare the features of the graphs of function f and g, then use your observation to describe the relationship between domains and ranges of the two functions. So since they're inverses, um, basically the notice like a point on f of x was like 0 comma 1. That was one of the points, 0 comma 1. Okay, 0 comma 1. But notice g of x has 1, 0. So that, that's what we expect when there's inverses. So the basically, if one point is x, y, then the inverse will have just those numbers switch around. So if, like, uh, in this case, 0, 1 is a point on the original, then 1, 0 will be a point on the inverse. So f of x and g of x are inverse functions. Therefore, the domain, meaning those are the x values for the those are the x values, and the, the x values for one of the function 
is the y values for the other. So the domain of f of x is equal to the range, which is the y values of a of x. Similarly, the range of f of x is the domain of g of x. In other words, the, and that goes for any function and its inverse. Function inverse, a function's uh, domain will be its inverse's range and vice versa. Okay. We can also put, uh, for example, um, 0, 1 is a point on f of x. And one comma zero is a point on a x. I hope that kind of makes sense what I'm saying here. Um, and uh, and you can graph these both on on Desmos, uh, which is the graphing calculator. And perhaps that would be a better. Uh, you could see them both on the same graph. I'll show you that. So the first one was e to the power of 0.4 uh, t. We'll just put 0.4 x. It likes x and y. Um, and then the other one was a fraction. So it was ln of x over 0.4. So as you can see, the, and, and perhaps this gives you a better idea of what I'm talking about. These are inverses of each other, meaning it's a reflection across y equals x. See this green line, y equals x? This blue and red are inverses of each other, meaning there are a reflection across that line, y equals x. Inverses are always a reflection across y equals x. <clears throat> and you can see no matter how far I zoom out, it's just a reflection of each other. And notice a point, for example, uh, let's just look at this. On the original, on the red line, this one has a point of 10 comma up here, right? 10 comma about 54 point whatever. And this one would have 54 comma 10. Let's see if we can find it. 54, comma something, 10, right? So they're, they're inverses of each other, right? I hope that makes it a little more clear. But anyway, um, with that being said, that's, that's the end of the lesson. Um, if you have any additional questions about this or any other of the lessons, uh, feel free to email me. My email is tt. R I G G at O F Y dot O R G. That's T Trig with two G's at O F Y dot org. All right. Well, with that, I will see you guys next time.